You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do you light a lamp and put it under a basket. Instead, you place it on a stand in the middle of the house so that it lights the room for everyone. That's Matthew 5, 13 to 15, or 14 to 15. There's a rapper I just stumbled upon, D1, a Christian rapper, who has been around for a while. He's got like 11 records, and I just saw him expose something I often talk about, something you can see at goodfight.org, about the gatekeepers of the industry and how they elevate people who are compromised morally and how they try to diffuse people who are coming on the scene speaking a godly message and they don't want that intertwined with the agendas that's being played out through the entertainment industry, particularly music, whether it's rap, pop rock, rock and roll, what have you. So here's D1 speaking about proposals made to him to be elevated to the next level in this world and how there's two different types of gatekeepers and what they offer. Check it out. I've had gatekeepers in the music industry who have literally tried to hold a record deal behind their back and let me know, like, look, if you if you're part of this homosexual act that I'm trying to take part in, you hear me? Yeah. Come on. This door open real quick for you. Like, I, I got a song where I've talked about that before called The Devil's Playground. Like, this is real, dog. And the only way that that type of stuff can work on you is if you let them have all the leverage to where you want what's behind that gate that bad. So that's, that's a real thing. Um, you also got people who, this is a different type of gatekeeper. The gatekeepers who will say, hey, you making too much righteous noise right now. If you just tone that righteousness down a little bit, then we'll allow you into these doors. But you got to tone that down. You got to become a little more vanilla. You heard me? A little more lukewarm, a little more bland, and you'll fit in with us more. So that's the slick gatekeeping. It ain't telling you, yeah, it ain't telling you to all the way, you know, bend over or, or open your mouth or something like that. It ain't that. But it's telling you, like, dim your light. And what ends up happening is you got so many people that's like, well, that's not that bad. They're not asking me to do nothing super crazy. I just got to dim my light. That's the scariest kind right there. Because a lot of people will be like, wait, I just got to turn it from level 10 to level 5? Man, bet. I could do that, bro. I bet. Now I get accepted? Cool. Next thing you know, you got a whole industry, brother, that's lukewarm. Whole industry lukewarm. So then when somebody that's on fire come along, they're looking at it like, whoa, you crazy. Hold on. You, you shining too bright. Hold on. Hold on. Chill out, man. You're doing, you doing the most. You, you messing up. Man, stop, man. So because you were lukewarm, neither hot or cold, I am about to vomit you out of my mouth. Those are words from Jesus in Revelation 3.16. The gatekeepers want people who are either completely compromised morally and will push whatever agenda they need to in order to maintain their status, their affluence all the things that the devil offered Jesus at the mountaintop that Jesus turned down, or they at least want them to think that they are not compromising and just have to tone it down a little bit, and they can justify it in their minds, oh, I can speak to people on the private, but I'm going to use my platform to elevate all the things of the world, not realizing how deep that compromise is and just the snowball effect it's having on everyone who is idolizing them or who is looking to them. We need to put others first. That means to put down our worldly ambition. The God of this world wants us to be as lukewarm as possible so that we are not shining bright and being the salt and the light in this world as we are called to be, as Jesus was, willing to pour himself out completely. You go on in Revelation 3, 17, you say, I am rich, I have grown wealthy and need nothing, but do you realize that you were wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked? So many celebrities and entertainers, they take this prize that they tell everyone they're thanking God for because they receive it as a blessing from God, but it's from Satan who has made them lukewarm, made them compromise their faith, their integrity, but the whole world is patting them on the backs and they've become blind because they've put the things of this world in front of their relationship with their creator through Jesus Christ. I'll finish it up with him talking about what I just mentioned about the God of this world, 
being the author of some of these blessings, but many celebrities receiving it as if it's from the God of the Bible in Jesus Christ. And they give praise to God, but it's a misplaced praise in their diluted faith, which is leading many astray. Just because people get blessed with money, though, we think them blessings come from God. The devil could bless you, too. He can. The devil could bless you, too. So, so when people get blessed and they're like, man, I want to thank God, man, stop throwing that on God, man. God ain't blessing you for that ignorance, for that foolishness that you perpetuate. Right. That's the devil blessing you. And, and now you, you, you think because you're elevating, you know, elevating don't mean that you are living a godly life. Mm -hmm. So the devil blessing people got people confused. Like, man, I'm out here winning. I'm out here winning. But your soul is dying. That's it for now. I hope this uh, opened your eyes in some way. If you weren't already familiar, be very wary of people who praise God when they are receiving worldly acclaim. The world did not acclaim Jesus. They rejected him, spit on him, mocked him, and crucified him because he exposed the hypocrisy of those who put the value of things in this world before relationship with God and did not love others the way they are called to, instead loved themselves and their selfish ambitions rather than denying themselves to live for God and others. I pray this finds you well. God bless. We'll see you tomorrow.